And it's Jenny Lynn. We'll give it up for Jenny Lynn. Yes, yes, yes. Very excited to be here. Traveled all the way from Providence. <laughs> the South County, you folks know how to take a journey north to Providence. <laughs> My South County friend was asking me recently, what do you Providence city slickers think of our level of preparedness? I reassured her. I said, oh, we don't ever think about you guys. <laughs> the Providence is good, things are good. The winter hasn't slowed me down too much. I've been getting out to the park with my kids, and going to some kid birthday parties. I like it when the parties are at the park. Fresh air, bird song, cupcakes al fresco. <laughs> now recently, I was sitting down to a picnic table at the park, right as the birthday party was leaving, and I noticed a fresh dollop of vanilla frosting perched right there on the table. Naturally, I scooped it up and ate it. <laughs> that creamy, fresh dollop of vanilla frosting was actually bird shit. <laughs> you might think poop would taste earthy. Maybe some warm notes of chestnut or oak. Maybe a crisp evergreen finish. You'd be dead wrong. The precise undernotes of bird shit are humiliation, <laughs> self-loathing, and acid. Humiliation, self-loathing, acid. Humiliation, self-loathing, acid. Similar to a blowjob. <laughs> that joke was, oh, Jenny, that joke is not going to help convince anyone you're not gay. I know. I know, Mom. I don't mind passing as questionably lesbian. I feel like it means I'm doing something right. I'm certainly not shocked by it. I wear it as a badge of honor. It feels like a win. I feel like it makes my life a little bit easier, a little bit safer. <laughs> I don't know that there's a joke at the end of this. The longer it goes on, the more I think I am gay. <laughs> so I ate bird shit. I also recently had strep throat. Maybe it was bird flu. <laughs> no, it was group A streptococcus, complete with highly contagious, thick saliva. And it was Christmas, and I was traveling to my in-laws. So it's the end of a long day, getting ready for bed. I realize, God damn it, I forgot my contact solution. Everything's closed, you can't use tap water, I don't know how to make saline solution, I don't know what I'm going to do, so I Google it. The answer might surprise you, as it did me, saliva, boom. Your own personal saliva, it's free, it's the same chemical compound as your tears, you only need a drop or two. Why not? So I'm pumped. I'm actually bursting with pride at this point. <laughs> and then I remember my mouth is full of highly contagious thick saliva. <laughs> I pause. I reconsider. Fuck it. <laughs> I line up my contact case. I pull up some saliva in my lower jaw. I carefully drew into my case. <laughs> Next morning, I get up, I pluck those semi-gelatinous contacts from their lukewarm bath of last night's saliva, place them into my fresh eyeballs. I blink several times, and then I think to myself, holy shit, 
I did it. I just solved my own goddamn problem. Maybe I am gay. <laughs> Additionally, I can still technically read. The family's been considering getting a dog, so I've been doing some research. Checking out the American Kennel Club website, which uses the word bitches at an alarming rate. <laughs> Choosing a rude bitch? A bit of a gamble. I did not know. Get your rude bitch in top shape to give birth. Yeah. Yeah, I should. Is it okay to breed a bitch in back-to-back -back heat sessions? Jesus. Great question. Great use of alliteration. I was beginning to think the American Kennel Club was written by a group of hilarious 13-year-olds. But as I continued reading, the messaging took an uneasy turn toward breeding to improve. And then it hit me with a one-two punch of advocating for the deep satisfaction of breeding dogs that are closely related, and then hit me hard with advocating for the favorite breeding combo of uncle-niece. Mm. And then it hit me. Well, shit. These are the exact same tenets as white nationalism. <laughs> I was also reading the newspaper, an article caught my slightly cloudy glaucoma eye. <laughs> the title said, the police have a new partner in the war on crime, a magic box. A magic box? You mean like a computer? A magic eight ball? A charming vulva? <laughs> Are those hilarious 13 girls headed again? Uh oh. It's a box, and its trick is the speedy processing of DNA. Now, I think that name is a little misleading. It seems to imply inadequate human cops that have frankly given up on using logic and deduction to solve crimes. Man, fuck scientific reasoning. Let's give wizardry and enchantment a shot. Yeah, uh, I'm just not doing a very good job. I think I got it. I'm not doing a very good job cracking these cases. I figure, let's give the magic box a turn. <laughs> now essentially, our African American brother, brethren will be stoked by this development. What could go wrong with wizardry? <laughs> now essentially, the magic box is gonna help police swiftly identify criminals by gathering bodily fluids from a soda can, cigarette butt, in my case, regurgitated bird feces, <laughs> processing it quickly, linking it back to DNA from previous crimes. Now this is going to be an uncomfortable conversation when the cops track me down. <laughs> oh, ma'am, <laughs> we just processed your saliva. Three things. Number one, you seem to share between five and seven percent of the exact DNA ancestry to the North American homing pigeon. <laughs> okay. Number two, your DNA came back marked to an ungodly amount of public defecation. Sidewalks, parked vehicles, Jesus Christ, picnic tables at the park, I just had my kid's birthday at the park. <laughs> well, where were you when I needed a strep throat diagnosis? <laughs> Number three, lastly, ma'am, Turns out, you are gay. 